Good morning, Fort Atkinson High School. It's that time of year where we get to welcome you back for the school year. Now, some of you may have heard me say before, but I think it's definitely worth repeating as a concept. Navigating challenges and working through issues that arise is what helps create the people we are and how we navigate them creates the person we'll become. We have been navigating and will continue to navigate some challenging times. As we work through the difficult times we are all in together, it's important to spotlight the continued importance of getting you all ready for what is next. Those of you that are new to FAHS this year may not have heard this before, but those of you that are returning, you know that whether it's a four-year university, two-year or technical college, military, or getting you career ready, Fort Atkinson High School staff are here to get you ready for what's next. Whether through in-person, mirrored, or full virtual learning, we are dedicated to providing the safest, most equitable education possible to do just that. In order to help communicate some of the changes you'll be seeing this year, we've created a short video to help visualize guidelines sent out over the past couple of weeks with specific aspects of this fall that should help for planning and preparing as we start the school year. It's also important to note, and based off of how the past six or seven months have gone, that between now and the start of school, and even after the start of school, certain aspects may change with how things are done in this ever-changing, fluid situation. You need to be patient, take a deep breath, and know that we will do our best to update you as soon as possible to any changes that arise as soon as we possibly can. I hope you enjoyed your summer and we look forward to continue the process together of getting you ready for what is next. It is extremely important to recognize that if we want to continue to have in-person learning as an option, following three simple guidelines will be critical. By following these guidelines and the mitigation strategies, the safety of everyone around you is positively impacted. Any students refusing to follow these guidelines will be placed in a virtual learning setting. With this in mind, the simplest way to look at your responsibilities during this transitional time frame is to remember the three W's. Wash your hands and sanitize frequently. Wear approved face coverings. And watch your distance by following physical distancing guidelines. The CDC reports that frequent hand washing and attention to hand hygiene is the number one way to keep people safe. Clean hands reduce the spread of germs and protect both you and those around you. Please take any opportunity to wash your hands or use hand sanitizer. The more you can sanitize or wash your hands, the more likely you are to prevent the spread of germs. Oh, rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. Rubber ducky, I'm awfully fond of you. Face coverings have been demonstrated by multiple research studies to help keep others safe. If doctors working in operating rooms for up to 18 hours at a time can do awesome things with face mask on, so can you. If you want more information about approved face coverings, please check out the Return to School document. Please be sure to keep face coverings in place as directed. When paired with face coverings, physical distance is one of the easiest and most important things we can do to reduce the spread of germs. We have done some extensive plannings with committee and experts to find times when we can promote distance between students, teachers, and other staff. If you have any questions, please let Mr. Rousseau, Mr. Gefford, or I know, and we'll be happy to help. As a reminder, there should never be more than one person in a bathroom stall. Remember to respect the physical distance of others. The commons and gym will be available before school starts. Please maintain physical distance. Face coverings are a must. If possible, we encourage students to arrive at school as close to the start of classes at 7.50 as possible. But don't be late to class. Lockers will be assigned by homeroom teachers. Unless there is an emergency, lockers are available before and after school and during lunch periods for students who brought a lunch from home. Don't forget to keep it tidy. As a reminder for all, only school approved locks will be allowed on lockers. We wanted to send this message out because every once in a while we see alternative locker securing methods used.
School approved locks that were purchased during registration will be handed out during lunches on September 9th. If you didn't get a lock during the registration process but still need one, they are available for purchase in the main office before and after school for $5. If you have a water bottle, please bring it with you. All of the water fountains have been disconnected. However, all the bottle filling water dispensers are still available. Three weeks later. If you find a line at a water fountain as you are headed to fill up your water bottle, be sure to respect other students' physical space. We will be following the A-B schedule again this year as we did last year. It is also possible that you may be asked to help sanitize shared resources by your teachers if you are willing to help. We are so thankful for everyone's patience and understanding as we find new ways to learn and work together. There will be lots of opportunities throughout the day for students to focus on hand hygiene. As you enter and exit each classroom is a perfect time to use a hand sanitizer that is located in each room or use your own. The lunch process will be quite different from past years, but you'll recognize some similarities as well. In accordance with health guidelines, microwaves will not be available during lunch this year. Please keep this in mind when planning and packing your lunch if you are bringing lunch from home. Additionally, no food may be ordered from an outside restaurant or vendor for delivery into the high school at any time. We have two very large tents filled with seating options outside in the back courtyard available for a limited number of students. We all recognize the importance of wearing a mask and keeping ourselves and others safe. Please be considerate of other students and remove your facial covering only when eating. Physical distancing rules don't change when you're at lunch either inside or outside. If you're within a six foot range of someone else, you need to have a facial covering on. This is extremely important. One easy way to remember it during lunch is, if you stand up, mask up. If you're seated and have the barrier between you and others at your table or around you, and obviously when you're eating, you don't need to have your facial covering on. Again, if you stand up, mask up. While waiting in a line, whether for the bottle filler or in the lunch line, you need to maintain physical distancing, even when you are wearing a facial covering. Areas will be marked on the floors to help guide students with regard to standing in the lunch line. Check out the signage and do your best to follow the guidelines. Continuing our effort to reduce touch points in the lunchroom, we will be accepting only cashless payment methods at this time. If you need more information about your lunch account, please stop in the main office and talk with Mrs. Kane. The High School Back to School Guideline is available at the Fort Atkinson High School website as well as via email to all students during the first week of school. Students, staff, and families can also find the document in the Fort Schools app. We ask that everyone read through it. It can answer many of the questions about coming back to school and what will happen over the next days and weeks. If any students feel ill while at school, they will be asked to report to the attendance office. A thermometer will be available for checking student temperatures. If a student develops any symptoms, arrangements will be made with parents about next steps. The school district has put together an easy checklist to help students, teachers, and staff screen themselves before coming to school. There are a few components that won't take long to go through. The first question is if you have been in close contact with anyone diagnosed with COVID-19 or has symptoms of COVID-19 in the past 14 days. If you haven't been in close contact with anyone with those symptoms or diagnosis, you can move to the next question. Step two, have you been advised by a doctor or healthcare provider to stay home or avoid close contact with others? If the answer to that is no also, move on to the next question. Part three, have you personally experienced any of the following symptoms in the past 24 hours? Fever of 100.4 or higher, cough or shortness of breath, head, muscle, or body aches, sore throat, loss of taste or smell, fatigue, congestion or runny nose, diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. If the answer to all of these is no, you can move to the last step. Part four, have you traveled to or from any areas with the CDC travel advisory? If you make it through all these questions, congratulations, you can come into school. If you answer yes to any of the questions on the screening checklist, talk to your parents. You may need to check in with your doctor or family health care provider for more information. If you are not sure about any of these items, you are welcome to reach out to myself or any of the associate principals to help answer those questions. Your learning matters. 
While we know this is still a relatively new environment for all of us, helping you learn and grow as students and as responsible citizens during this period of married learning is as important as ever. We know returning in this current state is different than anything before, but we need to make the most of this opportunity to continue to excel and reach our goals. Whether virtual or in person, there are certain specific expectations for our overall new learning environment. Be brave. It can be awkward for everyone. The more we can work through tough situations, the stronger we will be. Strive to get the most out of this unusual situation. Now is the time to take responsibility for your learning and academic goals. Show up on time to all of your classes, whether in person or via Zoom. Being present online is a requirement for attendance and attendance will be taken daily for each synchronous session. Be prepared. Have all the necessary supplies, pens, pencils, paper, calculators, or anything else necessary for each class. If you are tuning in virtually, find a quiet place away from distraction. Keep your microphone muted unless you are speaking or your teacher asks you to. Check your email daily and often. This is an important method of communication in our school. If you have questions about finding the best ways to access your email or need email help, Stop in the IMC and Mr. Alley or Mrs. Jacobs will be happy to help. If clothing is not appropriate for the classroom, it's not appropriate for a virtual environment. This also extends to appropriate posters and items in the background of the camera's view. Zoom classrooms should be treated as an extension of the in-person classrooms. The last thing we want is for anyone to get motion sickness. Please avoid moving around while you're on video. We strongly encourage you to keep your video on. We will want to see your face for attendance. When having online discussion, it is important to continue to work on people skills and talking face to face. We know it can be uncomfortable and awkward, but now is the time to work on these skills. There will be times we'll ask for your video to be turned off, but still remain online. Utilize the chat sidebar. Keep comments and conversations appropriate and on topic. Mom, who could you be texting? IDK, my BFF Rose. Keep cell phones out of sight and out of view unless requested to by your teacher. Please do not record, save, screenshot, or share anything from your Google Classes and Glass sessions. Teachers will be recording these as needed, keeping in mind student privacy issues that students can access later as needed. That's it for now. Please feel free to reach out to any of us principals if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks again for your patience as we all find ways to make this year a success. Now your teachers will go over some of the classroom-specific guidelines for each subject in each classroom area.